Growing up in, in Puerto Rico, I was immersed in a, in a really beautiful culture of people that are connected. As a child, I grew up in, in poverty and uh, I always found art as, a, as an escape uh, to allow me to dream and create innovation and, and think different about uh, everything that was in front of me. Helping people in my artwork, it was fueled by a necessity to redefine art. You know, art, it's all around us. It's what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we feel. And yet, when we can use those tools strategically, it can really help change behavior. There's nothing more beautiful than to love people and the moment that you show genuine interest, uh, magically people open up and they share their frustrations, their heartaches, their joys, and it becomes part of a, a conversation. The Grace Clinic is an amazing medical ministry and as a platform, they're providing free medical help as well as uh, prescription medications for people without insurance. I volunteer there as a translator. Sometimes I joke about it, they're gonna fire me, but you know, we're all volunteers. Uh, doctors are volunteers there, nurses. And I think being an artist, I'm always inquisitive to, I wanna learn more about you. You know, I'm really interested about you. So tell me more about your life. And, and you get to create relationships with a lot of these patients. As I was engaging in conversation, I will ask the patients, hey, if today's the last day you see me, uh, what words of advice or wisdom will you give me, okay? And their eyes were like, whoa, this is, I've never been asked that. But here's why I wanted to do that. I think that every human is so valuable. And you know, when I was growing up, I remember some of the people that grew up near me, regardless if there was poverty or, or stress, or um, they all understood the power of, of connecting and some of the most beautiful wisdom came from those who were hurting the most. Not from a CEO, not from a thought leader. Instead, uh, the salt of the earth, these people that are just, just beautiful. So I started uh, this initiative. I wanted to do paintings, oil paintings of a lot of these patients. As I would talk to them, you know, they gave me some words of advice. I would write them down in my sketchbook, take a picture, do a couple of sketches. And, uh, that became a body of work that was uh, very moving for me personally as an artist. The exhibit was really powerful because in the middle of the gallery I had two chairs and I had written between these two chairs, share your most treasured advice. And I didn't plan for this, but as people were visiting the exhibit, they were writing their own thoughts of advice and taping them all over the floor. So in a matter of weeks, you know, the floor was covered with sticky notes and just beautiful messages of of hope and messages of positivity. I'm working on this really exciting project with my daughter that we call a uh, ABCs of Encouragement for Girls. It's a book that it helps to inspire and build up and edify uh, young girls. We're creating art through words, through illustrations that are meant to encourage and help them feel secure. And each page is gonna include a just the right building block of a word that allows any caregiver to spend some time unpacking what that word means to them. Since I'm always experimenting with things, I, I keep a sketchbook where I'm doing uh, doodles out of coffee. And for the letter Q in the book, I wanted this idea of being quick, inspired by hurdles in track and field. One thing that it, I'm inspired by athletes to do hurdles, obviously you gotta run real fast, jump, run real fast and do it again, right? Um, so the thought that there is space between hurdles, recover, plan and go again, I think it's a beautiful analogy for uh, life. And the message that I have in the illustration is uh, be quick to learn from yesterday and go forward tomorrow, you got it. I hope that it, it opens a deep conversation about times in life when when you encounter a roadblock and how do you get around that or jump over it, right? I hope that this encourages kids to open up about the realities of, uh, that they're facing. Why are they sad? Um, and share their hearts out and hoping that, uh, that we can change a generation. I think it's our role to create escapes through art to help them transform their minds into, uh, into a new beginning, a new hope uh, of encouragement. And, and purpose. You can imagine, I mean, because we saw images here on, on, on TV of the devastation that, that 
category for hurricane brought to the island. I mean, my, my mom tells me when she opened the door after the hurricane, seeing hundreds of dead birds everywhere, and like somebody had ran a giant lawn mower all over the, the island. I mean, everything was down. So I wanted to uh, bring some help, and the first thing that came to mind was creating a, uh, a silk screen piece of art to raise funds to send supplies. We were gathering boxes, we were sending them to those locations, and I had a couple of friends who would gather them and then go and deliver to, to houses. The idea of getting myself out of my comfort zone to uh, use the only th tools that I have, which is art and, and thinking, to, to try to uh, mitigate that need, it, it was beautiful just to see uh, the results of it. But soon this became a, a bigger initiative that I really wasn't expecting. That was just phase one. And the moment that things were moving good and uh, people were getting what they needed, uh, we decided to go down because obviously it was a, a crazy need that, that people had. So uh, I put together a group of volunteers from Ohio the, to go and rebuild roofs. In Sonia's house, it was very evident that how the cracks, you know, in that town, town of Macau, it, it rains every day. So water comes down, which is a fire hazard with, you know, the electrical. So she was not turning her lights on and everything. We knock on the door and told her, you know, we're here from Ohio, we want to help maybe uh, work on your roof uh, to seal it. And her face, the eyes opened wide and she started crying, crying. She said, you, you don't understand that yesterday I lost my hope in God. And I've been crying every night, crying out, crying out, crying out and because of her circumstances. And today, 12 strangers show up out of nowhere. We found in the backyard a, uh, a garden gnome, a Santa Claus garden gnome wearing a Hawaiian shirt. And I have a painting of him holding the, uh, we call it Nick, because St. Nicholas, but wearing a Hawaiian shirt. But in, in the execution of that oil painting, what you see is some, uh, monochromatic blue values behind the oil and it creates this really ethereal uh, presence of, of the image and that was really meant to capture uh, families live for over a year under blue tarps so when you got into their spaces and, and see how they lived it, the inside of the home had this beautiful blue glow um, that me as an artist I was inspired by it but obviously people that you're living in this condition, it's not, it's not favorable because, you know, it doesn't really keep you out of the rain, you know, they don't seal perfectly. But uh, th that painting I love because of the composition and it's uh, chalk and a message of, of visual hope actually into the island and then seeing the blue around it, it's uh, really powerful. I think that my, my genuine passion and pursuit for people, I understand the power of the visual image, the power of color, the power of composition. And a lot of times to really bring the right message to the heart of that person, it may be a different media for different people. It takes a little bit of courage as an artist because a lot of times I approach things that have never done those particular media before. And a, a perfect example, I'm, I'm working on a uh, a really important art exhibit, probably a, a work that I'm extremely proud of, but it involves gluing objects into a canvas. And it's a different mind-twisting exercise in my mind because I'm gluing things down, and I'm analyzing shapes, I'm analyzing values, stepping back and, uh, and really thinking about is it the right placement to, to communicate the emotion. So, it has been challenging for me, but it's, I'm really happy with the result of where this body of work is heading. We Puerto Ricans, we, we love people, we love this experience, and, and it doesn't mean that my life is perfect. You know, we all struggle with, uh, uh, you know, the things of life, sickness and uh, job loss, or uh, you name it, you know, um, they're all in there, but if we move away from from that and focus more in the, in the emotional aspect of, of connecting with, with a greater humanity, we can make a better world. That's at the heart of how I like to approach art through life, because it's a part of me.
And if I don't do it, <laughs> I won't be happy.